and welcome to tonight's information engorged episode of Life Support. The only lifestyle show worth watching if you actually want to learn something. Because it's the only lifestyle show with all the information you need to put style into the life you lead. That's right. How's it? I'm your resident media medico, Dr. Rudy. And tonight in my men's health segment, I'll be showing you the safest way to enjoy a one-night stand. Among my top tips, I'll be teaching all you blokes a tricky way to fast-track that desirable six-pack stomach. I'll be giving you the dope on a drop-dead easy way to make sure your dog doesn't stray. And I'll be showing all you modern mothers the right way to photograph those happy memories of your little ones. Well, that sounds like quite a lot to enjoy tonight. Do you think we'll have time to fit it all in? Oh, well, we always seem to. Yeah, we sure do. So let's give it some gas and get on with the show. You OK there, little matey? Uncle Todd will be back in a tick. Oh, g'day. Having kids is great. The problem is, as a responsible parent, you've got to take them everywhere you go. This can be a huge worry, particularly if you're busting for a beer and a bet. And as we all know, if you get caught leaving them in the car, the law will come down on you pretty hard. We'll worry no more because Todd's come up trumps with another top toddler tip. All you have to do is take a photo of the empty back seat of the car, making sure the edge of the frame lines up with the edge of the window. Done. Now, what you want to do is blow the photo up to the size of the window. Now, you can do that on most computers or just take it down to your local chemist. And there you have it. A great way to care for your kids by keeping them close by without the worry of being nabbed for neglect. Are you like totally over share house accommodation? The endless parade of dodgy flatmates. A bunch of yuppies slumming it in pseudo student bohemia. They drink all your booze, they eat all your food and never stop partying. Not that I'm one to knock a good binge, but sometimes you've just got to have quiet time and a well-stocked fridge. Well, fret no more, because I've found the perfect prospective flatmate. Meet my friend Akmal. He's recently escaped from Woomera Reception and Processing Centre and I've installed him in my inner city pad. He's the perfect flatty. He's clean, washes five times a day in fact, does his laundry on a regular basis and all my bed linen and tea towels as well. He won't even eat my meat or drink my booze because it's forbidden. Now we all know that Arabs have terrorist connections and have their own collection of biochemical weaponry. But let's face it, in this day and age there's kudos in having a few dirty bombs in the backyard and there's a regular market out there that'll keep Akmal and me rolling in dosh. You won't have to worry about his wife and kids freeloading because they're still locked up. And you know that if he ever misbehaves, he's used to being sedated and handcuffed to the bed rail. So there you have it. The perfect flatmate. Plus, when Akmal's people take over the world, you know you'll be on their good side. See ya. Don't live with a gay hairdresser or a tranny. Well, I'm vegan, so they have to be at least vegetarian. Um, Definitely to have good gender politics, like I couldn't, like I live with men but not if they the women, just sort of do all the housework. Whew. This cardio boxing is a fabulous all body workout. It helps me stay trim. And after a rigorous session, I feel ready to take on the world. It's just a shame that most modern men aren't as willing to take on an exercise regime as us modern women. Sadly, it's an increasingly common problem for gorgeous, taut-bodied women to find themselves in relationships with flabby, unfit men. It's just not good enough. Of course, if he's a real fatty boomba, then no amount of nagging will get him to a cardio boxing class. So, if you want your love mate to have a body like Anthony Mundine, then it's up to you to get him swinging a few punches around the home. All you have to do is provide the incentive. I've been sleeping with your best friend, Mark. Mark has a much bigger penis than you. Oh, punches improve his upper body strength and raise his heart rate for a full cardiovascular workout. Oh, 
and you can get him to work on his legs by making him chase you around a bit. And finally, after you've taken him through a good workout, don't forget to take him through a few stretches. The most effective way to do this is by regular makeup sex. It doesn't lead to too many nasty strain injuries. Come in, Carlo. And there you have it. If you can get your man to spar with you at least three times a week, he'll be looking trimmer and feeling fitter in just a few short months, which has got to be good for the long-term prospects of your relationship. So, young Benny, I really am quite relieved to see there is no letter from the mysterious woman who's been bestering me over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, couldn't be bothered writing one this week, hey? Excuse me, young lady, maybe your mind entertains such scurrilous thoughts, but I can assure you nobody else would believe such nonsense. Well, if there isn't a letter to talk about, then let's not talk about it. But if you want to write to us about something that actually matters, send your letters to Life Support, SBS, Locked Bag 028, Crow's Nest 1585. Fine. Now here's another top tip from Dot. Oh, g'day. One of the biggest problems living in the city is the lack of privacy. It's all very well to have bay glimpses or a leafy aspect, but what good are they when your neighbours can see everything that you're doing day and night? You draw the curtains, you not only lose your view, but also your main source of light. Well now, there's a great way to maintain your privacy, ensuring that no one's watching you from the other building and still enjoying your hard-earned view and the natural light. All you'll need is one of these. Now whether you use a real telescope or build one like this doesn't matter. The point is as long as it looks real from across the road. Now position your telescope as visibly as possible at the window in question, making sure that it's pointing towards the building across the road. And there you go. Anyone up there who's been gawking into your lounge room will now be shocked to notice that you've purchased a high powered telescope and that it's aimed directly at them. Their immediate reaction will be to draw the curtains, which in turn will secure your privacy, leaving you to enjoy whatever view you have day and night, safe in the knowledge that no one's watching you for fear of being watched themselves. And so that's all there is to it. Another top tip from Todd for tower tenants. hate that girls must be instinct or something primal in a man that makes him feel like he has to hog the doona every time even with a large one like this well today I'm going to show you how you can decorate your doona in a way that will ensure that your man never takes more than his half ever again there's one thing a man will not touch even if his life depended on it sanitary products I don't know what it is but men will avoid these like the plague Nowadays, they come in an array of different shapes and sizes. Wings, ultra-heavy duty, ultra-thins, there's so many to choose from. What we're going to do is use these different shapes and sizes to decorate your half of the doona. I've simply sewed these on in a number of pretty patterns to create a beautiful design over my half of the doona. See how I've gone right up to the centre line and made it very obvious where the middle is? This is really important. So, let's see if it works. See? Works like a charm. Nighty night. How's it? Dr. Rudy here. Casual sex is a wonderful thing. Of course, sex is wonderful generally, but it's even better when you know you'll never see the woman ever again. Unfortunately, if you're an eligible medical man like myself, some women will try and trap you by telling you they're on the pill or they're using a diaphragm or they're being rendered infertile by a terrible car accident when it's all lies. So today, I'll be showing and some professional men how to protect themselves against paternity. 
All you have to do is stay and cook breakfast. I know it's traditional for a man on a one night stand to get the hell out of there as quickly as possible, but that strategy is absolutely wrong. You should always stay the night, then get up early the next morning and make a breakfast. That way you can crush up a morning after pill and spike her orange juice. Ah, there you are. I made you breakfast, darling. Drink up. Now, I know if she was lying about the birth control, there'll be no little Dr. Rudy's arriving in nine months' time. Plus, the morning after Bill causes horrible stomach cramps and nausea. So she won't be pestering me about seeing her again tonight. If you want to make a clean getaway, stay just long enough to make her breakfast. Season it with the right pharmaceuticals and you need never see her again. Bye now. Bye now. Well, Sigourney, it seems like Dr Rudy isn't the only one whose celebrity status has put him in jeopardy with the general public. What are you trying to get at, Todd? Well, I've been looking in the mailbag this week and I'm sorry to say I've received a mysterious, threatening letter myself. Really? From who? Well, that's the thing. I don't know. It's anonymous too. Oh, my. Maybe we should all be expecting one of these. Well, what does anonymous go on to say? Well, I'll read it to you. Yeah, good day, Todd, you'd be totally tricking yourself if you thought I'd fully forgotten these photographs. Yeah, right, as if I could. Expect to hear from me soon. Signed, Anonymous. Anonymous. Really? Yeah, see? Oh, come on, Todd, you wrote that yourself. No, I didn't. I got it out of the mailbag. Well, I don't know how it got there. Look, you didn't even stamp the envelope. Well, didn't I? Well... Yeah, right. I think maybe someone's been getting a little jealous of all the attention I've been paying Dr Rudy no, lately. It's not that. And I think they shouldn't worry because maybe I've made them a very special treat for the end of the show. Oh, really? What is it? You'll all have to wait and see. But you don't need to wait another minute to see this. Anyway, it really bums me out bad when I see something like this. Who knows if it ever made its way home? Posters like this are everywhere because it's natural for dogs to wander off in search of other dogs. It's part of their procreation instincts. And even desexing them doesn't cure it entirely. Which means that Kurt here is always looking out for when you leave the gate open so he can sneak out in search of other doggy company. What can you do? Well, today I'm going to show you a way to override even the most powerful doggy instincts. Studies done on rats show that nicotine addiction affects animals just as it does humans. I have here some nicotine patches. With a dog this size, you don't need a huge dose. If you have a bigger dog, you might want to go for something a little more potent. Sit still, Kurt. There we are. By getting your dog addicted to nicotine, it has no choice but to be loyal to you for its daily hit. Go on, the gate's open. Run out! Run out! See? Even with the gate wide open and bitch smell in the air, Kurt is going to remain loyal to me. A nicotine patch a day keeps the dog from running away. See ya! How's it? We are all too aware by now that the world is spinning on an axis of evil. Fortunately, as adults, we're alert and aware enough to be prepared and proactive. But how are we to educate our children in the new world order? The answer is child's play. Every child will have witnessed the terror tactics employed in the playground. In the past, being nasty to someone because you can has been frowned upon. However, now that there's a bona fide war being waged against terror, it's okay to strike first. So you should encourage your child to make the first strike against bullying by becoming the bully. <laughs> by encouraging your child to strike first, you can break the cycle of fear by escalating it. And don't confuse your child with mixed messages. Teach them to strike first in their personal lives too. Life is so much easier when you don't have to care for those around you. How happy your little ones will be when they understand that they can use the pre-empty first strike to terminate their relationships with extreme prejudice as soon as they suspect they're not going to get exactly what they want. After all, there are plenty of potential coalitions of the willing out there. 
and when your treasures fully understand the subtle nuances of the first strike, they will realize that bullying doesn't stop with mere physical violence, but also incorporates mental manipulation and distraction techniques. There's a future Prime Minister. Bye now. You can't really strike first. Although it would be a good idea. I mean, you can't always follow the rules. You've got to break them, sometimes. Men love a woman's pubic area, but they don't like a thick forest of hair from navel to knees. However, I found a serenely simple way to shape the perfect welcome mat for your man's little friend when he next comes visiting. First, you need some old x-rays of your pelvis. Some of you may already have these, but if you don't, it's not too hard to get a referral from your GP. Next, you need to get some photographic dulling spray from your local craft store. Then, mark out your to-do areas. It's important that you think negative and only mark out the area that you want to pilotate it and not any area you want left hair suit. Next, make an appointment with your gynaecological oncologist to discuss your alarming find at some dark blotches in your area. Then when you discuss treatment, go for the radiation option. After a few treatments, you'll notice your new do. This is called alopecia, and it's caused by radiation killing the cells that line the hair follicles. So there you have it. That natural, smooth, hairless look he loves, without the shaving cuts, pain, stubble or mess. There's nothing worse than, you know, coughing up a fur ball sort of thing. It's bald or it's nothing. Bald uh, eagle. I don't mind a bit of a runway. A mohawk. <laughs> Everything off. Brazilian's a bit far. Makes you kind of look like you're ten. I'm a Brazilian girl. Yeah. No, nah, if you go down there and you get something caught in your fucking teeth, you're just like, no. Oh. Dude, nah. Well thought, I must say, that Sagorni does have some wonderful ideas. Very clever she is. Yeah, right. Look, Dr Rudy, I'm just going to come straight out and ask you man to man, you know? Yes, Doc. What exactly is going on between you and Sigourney? What? Well, has something personal blossomed out of your professional relationship? My word, Dot. Are you serious? I must say, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't tell me you haven't noticed it, Dr Rudy. Noticed what exactly? Well, the way Sigourney's always touching your hand in that gentle but reassuring fashion. Or the way she looks at you or takes every opportunity to wrap her arm around you. I really hadn't noticed. Well, I don't know how you could have missed it. She was doing it at the beginning of the show. I think you're reading too much into it, my friend. No, I'm not. Ever since those letters arrived, she's been taking a very physical approach to you. No, I really can't believe it. Yeah, well, we'll check it out at the end of the show. But meantime, why don't you check out this? What are you doing? Ah, we're being robbed! Ah! Don't you hate this? Getting sprung by the owners just as you're finishing up? I mean, normally I'd smack them about a bit and do a runner. But luckily, thanks to the reality TV dickheads, there's now a better option. Gotcha! You're being punked right now by our totally hidden cameras. You're on TV right now. We are? There are hidden cameras all around the room. <laughs> you should have seen the look on your face. We really got you going, didn't we? We thought you were trying to rob the house. I know! Oh, you're so colourful. Well, thanks very much, guys, for being on the show. You've been great sports. But the camera crew and I really better be going now. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Thanks again. And that's all there is to it. Next time you get sprung, tell them they're on totally hidden camera. And you'll get away with anything short of murder. <laughs> See ya. worse while perusing the news of the day than reading about the tragic death of yet another young Australian. But even more disturbing can be the accompanying photo of the recently deceased. 19-year-old Gary here was killed instantly when the car he was driving hit a tree. And the best picture his parents could give to the media was this goofy photograph that looks so out of focus, looks more like a photo after the impact than before. This is so undignified and unnecessary. 
And ladies, you don't want to look as bad as these parents do and get caught out as someone so unsentimental, you have no decent photos of your children. That's why every modern woman should take the time to ensure that her happy memories are publisher proof. Now, most people will go for a quick family portrait taken by a supposedly professional photographer. But I find this option fairly impersonal and actually quite tacky. What it says to people is we had to make a special effort to have this picture taken because we have no family occasions worth photographing. Not the impression you want to give at all. Of course, most modern mothers will have a collection of school snaps to choose from, but these are so formal. And if you can't afford to send your child to a private school, well, you don't want people to have third world attitudes to the death of your child. You want them to feel that their passing counts. So it's best to design a series of medium memory worthy snaps yourself. Simply gather the children together once a year and take a series of appropriate images. Ones that would be suitable to accompany the tragedy of a backyard pool drowning. To the senselessness of being the victim of yet another hit and run. And don't be afraid to accessorise with adorable touches like these fairy wings. Personalising your pictures is the key. And that's all there is to it. With a little pre-planning, you can rest in peace of mind that if tragedy does strike any of the members of your family, and the media is after a memory, you've avoided the misfortune of seeming unsentimental. Ever wanted a well-defined six-pack without the months and months of working out and eating right? Well, here's a top tip your trainer hasn't tried. What I've got here is a six-pack stencil. It's very easy to make, just mark it out on an A4 sheet of acetate. Then, put it across your stomach like this, lie back, and let the sun do the work for you. Oh gee, got a good sleep in there. Holy schmoly, that worked out better than I thought. They look great, don't they? So there you have it. Get that body back into shape with some incredibly low impact tanning training. Well, prepare to be shocked. But here we are, bringing the curtain down on another episode. As good a reason as any to make a Szechuan spice duck, seared scallop, smoked eggplant and asparagus salad. Gee, my favourite. Really? Oh yeah, duck and scallop, always up for a bit of surf and turf. Thanks Sigourney. Oh Todd mate, just the expression on your face is more than enough thanks. Are you sure you don't want any ointment? Oh yeah, no thanks. Now, if I were you, I'd make sure I was watching the show next week. That's right, because it's going to be a very special episode for some very special children. And I know you'll all quite enjoy these memorable and moving moments. Until then, remember that practice does make perfect. And know that the only reason we're in here is because you're out there. Good, Good night, night, Australia. Australia. Go on, Todd, mate. Get stuck in.